Hello friends and welcome to the very first episode of Misconceptions. I'm your host, David White. Before anything else gets underway, let me say how super, extremely, hyperactively excited I am to be doing a podcast. I discovered podcasts last year. Now a year later, I'm a podcast fanatic. I listen to my subscriptions to and from work, at the gym, and just while lounging around the house. Podcasts are awesome. Most of you probably already know this as old news, but if this is your first podcast, I welcome you to this glorious medium, and I hope we are a good first experience, and that you will go forth and subscribe to a lot of great podcasts that fit your fancies. I recommend my original and constant favorite, Campaign Podcast by Cat Cool. If you're into funny stories, funnier characters, and the occasional Star Wars-themed episode. But enough about all that. Misconceptions. That's why you're here. Misconceptions is an actual play podcast of the City of Mist RPG. Now let me break that down. When I say actual play, I mean that myself, and four of my friends, are going to sit down around a table and play through an original story set inside the City of Mist role-playing game system. If you're still unsure what all that means, we're a detective radio show. Now, City of Mist may be an unfamiliar RPG system to you all. That's understandable since it is new. In fact, at the time of this recording, City of Mist doesn't even have any fiscal books on the shelves of any stores. It has been a few months since the game was funded, quite successfully I might add, on Kickstarter. Later this year, yours truly, will be receiving some nice hardback rulebooks and other goodies for my own pledge. But until then, Son of Oak, the development team behind City of Mist, have provided a free starter set featuring the rules to their system, great pre-made characters, and two free adventures, both of which I've played through and both of which are really fun. If, after listening to this podcast, City of Mist sounds like something you want to check out, and I hope it is, swing over to their website at sunofoak.com and download that free starter set. City of Mist is a noir-styled superhero adventure game. It features mundane people with superhuman abilities in a city that is much more than it seems at first glance. The developers of the game have cited the Daredevil Netflix show as a major inspiration to their game style. And it shows. I first found City of Mist actually by accident. My friends and I were wanting to get together to play a little Halloween themed adventure last year, and I stumbled upon the City of Mist Kickstarter. After reading over the premise and downloading the starter set, my interest was piqued. And after playing the Halloween adventure with my group of friends, (laughs) I was hooked. If the setting was not enough to make you interested in City of Mist, The game system is a combination of the Powered by the Apocalypse and Fate RPG systems. Now, I will admit I've never played either of these systems, but the combination that City of Mist features is great. The rules are exceedingly simple and open to interpretation. An adventure plays like a back-and-forth conversation between the characters and the Master of Ceremonies, the City of Mist's Game Master. The entire system is narrative-driven, and that is a big deal to me. Now, I got into role-playing with D&D 3.5 back in high school. Since 2009, I've played a lot of Pathfinder and a lot of Edge of the Empire, and I've just now started to get back into Dungeons & Dragons with 5th edition. But in every system I've played, in every game I've ever DM'd, one thing has always been the focus. The story. My GM motto is Story Trumps Rules, and no matter what game I play, I always want the players to walk away feeling like they heard and participated in an engaging story. I've had sessions where my players and I have cried over a character's fate, because we spent so many nights learning their story, talking to them, thinking like them. We spent so much time with these characters that they had become a part of us. In fact, my high school 3.5 group and I, we we still talk about the adventures we had every Friday night in that little church building annex together. And that is the kind of role-playing adventures I like. I say all this to say, Misconceptions is going to be an adventure. 
where four very different heroes will try to pull back the levels of shadow, subterfuge, and corruption to get at what's underneath and what's really going on in the city. I do have a story in mind, but as any GM can tell you, the best laid plans of mice, men, and GMs often go awry. Who knows how long it will take our heroes to get to the bottom of the mystery, and who knows what other stories they will uncover along the way. Misconceptions promises to be a story that will evolve and adapt to the choices of the heroes, and I hope you will join us for the journey. Now, with that extremely long introduction to the introduction episode of Misconceptions out of the way, let's get to the adventure, where there's going to be more introductions. The City a mashed up combo of the old world and the new, of the mundane and the mystical. By day, this city is everything it seems a city with tower and skyscrapers, potholes that never seem to stay fixed, and stiffs and ties and dames and high heels. But at night, the real nature of the city comes out. At night, the shifty eyed stalker becomes a creature with dripping claws and a maw full of teeth. At night, cars roll down the streets with no one in the driver's seat. But when morning comes, nobody can remember how the night really went. They remember through a fog, or more appropriately, a mist. No one knows where the mist came from, or its true nature. In fact, most everyone in the city doesn't even know the mist exists. The mist doesn't just cover up either. It affects everything and everyone in the city, changing them, warping them. Most of those affected by the mist, they take what the mist gives them to turn a profit or pursue selfish gains. But there are some, just a few, that fight the good fight. They put their necks on a line to protect the city from the nefarious ne'er-do-wells. It's not always easy. In fact, it never is. But these legends don't surrender. This is a story of a few of those legends. Their story needs to be told, and it needs to be heard. <laughs> Copyrighted. All right, let's go around and uh, meet the players who will be in Misconceptions. Uh, let's start with the handsome fellow to my right, uh, Jaime Torres. Uh, who are you? And uh, tell us just a little bit about who you are going to be playing today. Bill is <clears throat> somebody who has been sober for all of two days. Um, he constantly struggles with that. He misses his wife and son because they aren't around at the moment. Um, and he works for some pretty shady characters whenever he's not dealing cards at the casino. Okay. And let's move on to uh, Zach. Zach, who are you going to be playing? Uh, my character is Rin Pascal. He is a uh, up-and-coming software engineer and also f frequently hacks and hacks into city networks and things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, he just recently had an accident where someone ran him over with their car and woke up in some strange facility. So he's trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Tessa, let's move on to you. Uh, who are you playing? I am playing Faye Carver, and she is a teacher who's really passionate about social justice. Um, she's also searching for her long lost love, and she has a really strong connection to nature. Okay. And the prettiest member of our table, Carrie, uh, who are you playing? Uh, my character's name is Esther Black. Um, I recently lost my father, um, and I've now taken over um, the bar that he owned, Morty's. Um, and I am just trying to run the business and kind of figure out what life is like now that Dad is gone. 
The scene opens up to a landscape shot of a city. There is mist rising up from in between the buildings. Uh, there's grates in the sidewalk that this mist keeps billowing out of. There are towering skyscrapers, a bustling downtown district. And as the camera begins to zoom into the city, we see people getting ready for their day, going to work. The sun is just breaking over the cityscape and uh, casting long shadows and light into the city. And we see just people walking about, going to their jobs. But as these people walk through the mist, uh, their shadows portray a different silhouette than the figure we just saw. Uh, one person walks through the mist and we see uh, angelic wings sprouting from their back and uh, the briefcase that they were holding now looks like a, a sword and a shield is in their other hand. In another location we see a group of kids on their way to school and as they pass through the mist uh, we see their knees are twisted backwards and uh, they have more of an animalistic uh, look but then when they pass out on the other side of the mist all you see is these uh, this group of kids with backpacks and hoodies going to school and as the camera continues to zoom through and we see all these warped visages and we see all these people going to work uh, we hear a very faint alarm going off in the distance and the camera kinda zooms up to the second story apartment building and it goes through the grimy window uh, through these curtains that are pulled very tightly and we see the figure of a man lying in bed and an alarm clock going off right next to the bed. Jaime, tell me what does your character do uh, as he hears this alarm going off right next to him? Well, <clears throat> he has some stubble going on and some major bedhead and he hits snooze the first time the alarm goes off because that's just the kind of guy Bill is okay. and then he hits snooze two more times looks at the alarm clock says oh shoot and then hurriedly runs to the bathroom brushes his teeth while combing his hair and runs out of the door while grabbing his shirt okay and uh, do we notice anything uh, interesting or different about his uh, physical appearance? I'm, of course, referring to the tattoos that are all across your body. I mean, it's normalized to him, but yeah. I mean, oh, he, yeah. he's just... Yeah, he's, 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 him. he's always wearing long sleeve shirts to try to cover up his, his tats that are sleeved from, I mean, literally the top of his hand to the tops of his feet. Okay. Does it go kind of across his chest, his back, or is it just in, on his arms? No, no, no. It's... it's all uh, along his body. Okay. Okay. Um, and how did you say he dressed? What did he What he put on and all that? Uh, usually wears blue jeans, boots, long sleeve plaid shirts, and a cowboy hat because he works in a western themed casino. Okay, we'll go ahead and skip ahead to you arriving at work. You drive your car down to work, and uh, you arrive at a building. And usually all of the fountains would be going and all of the uh, lights would be flashing at nighttime, but this is during the morning, and so none of that is happening. But there is a sign above the door that says uh, the Golden Flamingo Casino. You walk in through the double doors, you see some janitors. It's very quiet, just the janitors kind of picking up trash from last night's shift. You see some dealers already at their tables, already at their venues, and they are wearing long sleeve shirts and similar western themes to what you are wearing. And you also see the hints of tattoos very similar to yours poking out from underneath their clothing. And as you're walking over to your table, uh, you hear the PA system go ding dong. And you hear a very familiar voice over the PA system. Bill, could I uh, see you in my office, please? Uh, what do they want this time? <sighs> and so I start heading towards the second floor where I'm sure this person is. Okay, you climb the, uh, the flight of stairs and you go up to your boss's office. There's a very double ornate doors with silver handles and the, the handles are shaped like skulls. And you thought this was very odd whenever you started working here, but uh, you've kind of grown accustomed to placing your hands on these skulls like you do right now. You grab the skull, you twist the door, and you go into the office. The office is a very open space, a, a velvet carpet, very nice, very lush, and there is a large window that covers one entire wall, 
and it allows your boss to look out on the show floor, on the casino floor, to see everything that's happening and to keep an eye on all his employees. Your boss is, in fact, standing right there next to the window with his back turned to you. He's wearing all black, uh, and uh, he's perfectly silhouetted against the light of the casino. And without even turning to you, he, uh, he begins to talk to you. <sighs> you smell that, Bill? That's the smell of a new day and the promise of profits and suckers. And he turns from the window and goes to his desk and eases himself down into his, his giant chair. Uh, and you notice that around his neck he has a bolo tie. Uh, you, you notice this, but the audience notices this for the first time. Uh, and instead of a Lone Star of Texas or some western theme thing that you would usually find on a bolo tie... Instead, it is a silver skull. He looks at you, he looks you up and down, he says, Did you have a good night, Bill? Yeah, it was good enough. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that I uh, always want to take care of you. His desk is just a mess. Uh, it has uh, just a pile of unsorted chips on the left side. Then on the right side, all these chips are kind of stacked up. Very high stacks of these tokens. Uh he kind of adjusts his bolo tie and uh, leans back in his chair and says, uh, so Bill, uh, how did last night go? How did your, uh, assignment go last night? About as well as you'd expect it to go. I mean, I try to do what you asked. They weren't home. I went to the, where the trail led me. I talked to, to their neighbors. I talked to their acquaintances. And nothing turned up, uh, and I don't know what you want from me. Well, Bill, that's a bit disappointing. Uh, I, uh, I trust you to do things, and uh, when you don't do them, well, uh, he takes a he takes a token off his desk and he starts rubbing uh, the outside of it. He says, uh, "You see, come come here, come here real quick, Bill." I I stand in the same spot. He, uh, he's rubbing the outside of it. He says, do you see the ridges on this, this chip token? Yeah. Well, uh, whenever you bring in a, uh, a chip token, I can usually tell quite a bit about the, the person it belonged to. You see, the more varied, the more long a life a person has had, uh, the more ridges in the token. Now, as you can see right here, I have lots of tokens. Some are... Some have ridges, some don't have very many. But it's just a reminder, Bill, of how we're just a big old mixture of our life experiences. Isn't that right, Bill? I suppose so. Okay. Well, uh, why don't you go ahead and go to your station, get everything ready for the day. Uh, I'll see you at closing. All right. As I walk out, I'm just like, such a prick. <laughs> And then we're going to cut to uh, Faye. Uh, Faye, it is um, morning time during the week. Um, kids are coming off the bus, getting out of um, their parents' cars. Uh, I guess I should ask, what uh, what grades do you, does Faye teach? Uh, she teaches third. Okay, third. Okay. Um, yeah, so they're, they're younger kids kind of getting off uh, the bus. Everybody's running in. You're, uh, tell us, what does, what does Faye do? on a, a normal morning before school. Sure. So Faye gets up like solid two hours before she has to be there. And she always has her garden in her um, apartment. And her apartment has a balcony that like looks out onto the city. So she's got this garden there and she goes and she takes a good like handful of flowers every morning and puts together her flower crown for the day every single morning and so she cuts each of the flowers and but it's a nice thin one it's not like an obnoxious one that's like huge on her head it's just like a small little headband and then she does that and she waters her plants and takes care of them and then she usually puts on a for like school she usually wears like a long flowy type dress um with like a jean jacket over it and then she grabs her school badge and her bag and goes to school and then at school 
she always goes into her room and she also has plants everywhere in her room and so she's got lots of windows um which is very unusual because you know most teachers don't so she had to ask specifically for Uh those windows and then she's got all her plants set up and she takes care of them all in the morning so that the kids feel refreshed when they walk into her room okay okay so are you you're inside your room yeah yeah okay um so the kids are all filing in everybody's coming in uh, it is almost time for the bell to ring. In fact, the bell does ring, uh, and uh, little Timmy is running up into the door. He is missing his backpack yet again, uh, and as you're just about to get onto him or correct him for not having his backpack, you see a man run around the corner, and he is wearing a green hood. Uh, he runs around the corner, runs up, and he says, Hey, hey Timmy, Timmy, Timmy! Uh, and your, your heart starts to beat a little quicker. Uh, you've never seen this man before. You kind of lock eyes with him, and he says, uh, 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 "Hi, Miss. Uh, just just giving my son his his backpack." Oh, hi. Um, hi. I'm Mrs. Kava. Um, uh, honey, we 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 gotta be going. And you see a a woman step around the corner, kind of motioning for uh, this green hooded man to uh, come, and says, uh, "Oh, oh, uh, nice nice to meet you, Miss Porter. Uh, uh, I uh, gotta gotta go." Now he uh, kind of runs down the it's the it's Kava. Thanks. Yeah, and disappears around the corner. Okay. Okay. Okay, Timmy. Um, let's let's go find a seat. Come on. Okay. So you help Timmy find a seat. Um, tell us, kind of what uh, what do you do at the beginning of class? Um. So she sits all of the kids down, and um, we start with a writing prompt, and so she stands up and she's like, "Okay, kids, let's get out our journals for the day. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start and talk today about." what your favorite animal is, and if you could be any animal in the world, which one would you be and why? So all the kids pull out their journals and they start writing furiously about their favorite animal. They're very attentive class. Yeah, that must, that must <laughs> be really nice. That's such an attentive class. It does everything you say, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so as, as all these kids are uncharacteristically writing furiously <laughs> in their journals, um, you see one kid. Um, uh, we'll say his name is John. Um, and you have noticed, well, John has come to school before with bruises on his face. Um, you have had conferences with his dad. Um, dad is pretty much always smelling of alcohol when he comes to the meetings. Um, you're not certain that it's abuse, but all signs kind of point to that. Um, so you've had conversations with this this man about Johnny's bruises in the past, and he's just kind of shrugged it off and said, you know, he's he's a clumsy boy, and I don't, I don't know, I can't, whatever. He does what he wants. Um, but you think maybe it is time for you to have a, uh, a face-to-face meeting with this man outside of the uh, school building, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, and then we will transition out of the classroom uh, to a room that is much more messy. And uh, there is just a desk with all these journals and papers and uh, pictures all scattered across the desk. And uh, we see a woman with just her head down on her arms laying on this desk. There's a, a knock at the door and Esther uh, wakes up. Uh, you've fallen asleep uh, during one of your long nights of research again. Uh, kind of explain what does a what does your office space look like? Um, so I've got um, my computer set up uh, at the corner of my desk, and um, there's papers just kind of everywhere, um, from invoices for the bar to um, uh, there's pictures of my dad over the years. Um, I've got his. Um, little black book with information um, that I've been reading through and um, lots of scribbled notes kind of everywhere every little piece of paper has some kind of note Um, it's organized chaos I know where everything is but somebody just coming in would not understand it okay Um, so you kind of kind of wake up uh, rub your face uh, can't believe you fell asleep again Uh, you hear a knock at the door again Uh, uh, Miss Black, um, are, are are you in there, Miss Black? 
Oh, uh, I'm I'm here. Oh, uh, all right. This is uh, this is John. No, I already used John, didn't I? Um, shoot, Pablo. James. <laughs> James. Okay. Uh, this is this is James. Uh, I'm just here to get ready for the day, and uh, I I needed help finding where the gas valve is. I can't I can't start the fryer up again. Something's messed up with it. Well, fire and alcohol don't really go together, so um, I'll just be careful with that. Um, I'll, no, I'm, the, I'll I'm, uh, I'm the cook. I'm going to make the burgers. <laughs> I don't serve the alcohol. That's you. <laughs> That's fair. You I'm okay? just learning that we make burgers. I forget that we have that part. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm learning the other half of the business here. <laughs> um, I'll be out in a minute. Just um, I just need a minute. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, he, uh, you hear his footsteps walk off. I gather up uh, I all of the papers and the notes and um, stuff them into the drawer um, off to the side. Um, and I stack up all of the invoices and things. Um, I close out of the um, searches that I was in. Um, and I uh, go to um, the little, there's a small wardrobe in the corner and uh pull out one of my uh work shirts it's not really a uniform but um it's just what dad always kind of wore so um i pull on a fresh pair of jeans and um button up a flannel shirt okay um so jeans and a flannel shirt yeah and then you uh kind of open the door and you hear a James from the kitchen. Uh, oh man, I turned it on too much. I'm coming. All right, and with that, we will transition to the uh, the next scene. Um, uh, I'll just say, Ren, describe what your uh, your former fledgling business looked like and uh, what it what it looks like now. Well, the a business originally was like two stories of cubicles of okay. just like workers and stuff, and I had this huge glass office, and all the prestige of like where I graduated college and um, all these awards that I've received for just being incredibly intelligent in the technological world. Um, and then after the accident, I um, as as Ren, I just like lost everything. I couldn't remember anything about my business um my vp bought bought me out and you know is now leading the company so now my business is in this like random shady part of town there's like two or three cubicles they're all there's just like papers everywhere and i've got this small office in a corner that has this tiny like window just like a circle window up at the top mm -hmm. that just like shines in little little spatters of light and you can't you probably you can't even look through it because it's no. so high up okay. no it's it's like as, as if you're on a boat and it's just like that tiny okay tiny kind of hole in the boat um so the light comes through and then at like three o'clock i can't see anything anymore um okay. so i walk in to my office and turn on the lights and they flicker go off and then they turn back on okay and i'm like all right guys all right guys we are about to start a great work day. It's going to be amazing. I promise. We'll be a big business just like it was last time, I think. I really can't remember. But it's going to be amazing. I promise. So is there anyone in the office with you? There's, like, one guy, and he, like, <laughs> looks over. Uh, who, are, who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. Where's Where's Bill and Joe? Uh, I think they quit last week, man. I'm the only one here. Well... I'll stick with you, William. Whatever. That's right. My name is William. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta work on some like non-white names. <laughs> I, write just, names <laughs> I thought all of them were gonna be apostles. That was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. Yeah, so, uh, Peter, John, and Luke. We'll Sorry. go with Pablo on that one. <laughs> okay, okay. The name of the business. Hey, Pablo. Sons, Sons of How are you Thunder. Doing? Uh, I'm. I'm good. What are we what are we doing today? Are we unpacking more boxes? <coughs> I thought we packed on un, unpacked all the boxes. Didn't didn't, no. the other, didn't the other guys do it? No? No man, they quit last week. <laughs> like I've literally been unpacking boxes this entire week by myself. 
Well, I'm just I'm just gonna go to my office. You unpack the rest of the boxes and just let me know when you're done, and I'll give you some kind of work or something. Sure thing, Mr. Pascal. And he gets up from his cubicle and goes over to the other cubicle where all the boxes have been stashed. <laughs> Starts unpacking them. Um, what a you go into your office. What does your your office kind of look like? In the office, there's just like a small desk. There's a rectangular desk, um, but it, the tech on the desk doesn't match where, where we're at. There's like a high-tech laptop, um, and it's just beautifully designed. And then I've got two desktops um, just sitting on the side just in case I need them. And then I've got like these Wi-Fi routers, and um, there's all type of just like random tech spilled out everywhere. There's like this random fan that's sitting on the floor that I've got to do something with. There's like a motherboard that's just like chilling on my desk that there's some tools scattered around it that I'm tinkering with. Um, okay. So, and then I just like grab the laptop that's just sitting in the middle and open it up. Okay. Um, where, or how do you kind of conduct your uh, extracurricular activities? Do you have like a, a conspiracy board somewhere or like a, a hidden panel? Yes, I open a drawer in the desk and I type a code into the side that you can't see. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do a thumbprint and then a retinal scanner pops up out of my desk, okay. scans my eyes. And then there's like a small, like, just, it's even like a cubby, not even like a huge space because the uh, building's just super small. And then I just kind of like walk into it and. It's just like a four foot by four foot okay. cubby that I've got. Okay, so just a little little closet. Kind of kind of describe what uh what's in this closet. So there's a giant cork board that I've just got set up of there's different lines going everywhere in the middle. Um, it's a bad drawing of what I can remember of this accident okay. and where I was, and I can't even remember the street names, but. I've got this picture of an accident and what the car kind of looked like. Um, and then I've got a couple pictures of this weird medical facility that I woke up in. Um, and then there's a picture of an x-ray because I felt like something was wrong with my head. So I went to the doctor and the doctor was just surprised by what was in my head. So I had to kind of pay him off so he wouldn't tell anyone. Uh, so there's like a picture of my brain and like half of it's just my regular brain and the other half is like metal. Um, and then I've got like a list of abilities and stuff where I can, um, where basically like I'm a human computer, I can process things faster than my laptops and computers can. Um, I, for some reason can connect to like, I'm just a live wireless hub. And then I've also, um, just got all this like extra and memory storage of I can, once I see something, I just remember it for always and can pop it up and okay. even touch something and that image will appear on whatever computer I'm near. You pick up a, a piece of paper that was kind of just laying on one of the shelves next to the, uh, the cork board that you have and you take one of your pins and your lines and you put it down in a corner and you pin this um, picture there. Or it's not a picture, it's just a, a piece of paper with some writing on it. And it says a uh, uh, drug dealer meeting happening tonight at 7 and uh, you remember that you have been uh, researching lately uh, there's just uh, there's been a new drug on the streets uh, no one really knows where it's come from and in fact uh, very few people in the city know about it uh, the police have been kind of covering it up uh, but because of your hacking and everything you have kind of dug out uh, that this is being covered up and this drug is very strange because uh, after the high, uh, the people that take the drug get very violent and very bestial. Uh, and so there's been a lot of uh, grisly attacks and uh, grislier murders that have been happening uh, in relation to this drug. And so you've kind of been researching it. Uh, and you have finally found that a dealer connected to this drug is going to be having some sort of cell going down at 7. Um, tonight and so you kind of you kind of remember all that and uh, then you hear uh, Pablo is his name Pablo yeah. you hear Pablo knocking on your door and he jiggles a handle of course you locked it um, and Pablo says uh, uh, hey we uh, 
we got some computers in here. Uh, we don't really have any space for them, so I was kind of needing to know what you wanted to do with them. Do we want to eBay them or what? Pablo, I'm busy right now. Just to set them down somewhere. We'll make some cubicles or something. And you, you hear on the other side of the door, hey, there's no one to set them down. <laughs> and he just walks away. Um, all right, so uh, we zoom out of that. And um, we go to the Golden Flamingo. Um, and uh, Bill, you are wrapping up your shift. Uh, you've only had a few people in. Uh, your boss, Jeremiah, is his name. I didn't tell you that earlier. But Jeremiah is usually a only has you fill it. Yeah, he's a bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be a bullfrog. Um, and now he's a good friend of yours. Uh, and mine. <laughs> he's not. Uh, but anyways, uh, Jeremiah only has you work during the day in the casino. And at night, he sends you out to um, make collect house calls. His, date. <laughs> his dates. Collect his debts. Yeah, to make house calls. Um, and so you, you clock out and you report to Jeremiah's office as usual. Uh, you see the unsorted mess of tokens come in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah's sitting at his desk. You see the unsorted pile of tokens has uh, been sorted and that those towers of tokens on the right side of his desk have gotten taller. Um, and he looks up and says, Ah, Bill, uh, I have your new assignment for tonight reaches under his desk and pulls out a manila envelope and he slaps it down on the desk in front of him. You open up the manila folder and you see the dossier on tonight's target. Uh, there's a picture paper clip to the dossier and it is a man with disheveled white hair and big horn rimmed glasses on his face. He's kind of shrimpy looking. There's no street address but there is a list of known associates and you could probably track him down by talking to these associates. So you look it over, and then you close it, and Jeremiah says to you, Now, Bill, this ain't going to be like last night with the old lady mishap. You're going to find this dude quick and quiet. You're going to take him out quick, and you're going to bring him here quicker. I don't want any noise about this, Bill. You understand me? I think so. Good, good. Uh, now, uh, go do your job, Bill. And he gets back to sorting the tokens. At your leisure. Faye, it is after school. All the kids have gone home. Uh, and you have uh, found yourself at a pub downtown uh, called Morty's. Uh, this is where... Uh, what was his name? Was it Little Johnny? Or John? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little uh, Timmy. No, Little Timmy no, was the one who yeah. forgot his backpack. Johnny is the one who's been hurt. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny, uh, this is where his dad usually hangs out uh, most days and evenings and mornings. Um, so, you're, you're at the front of Morty's. Okay. Um, so, I'm... I'm watching. I haven't seen him yet. Yeah. Um, and so, I decide, you know what? In my spare time, I'm just going to go ahead and go on in. Okay. And get a drink. So I walk in and I sit down at the bar and I mean it's like early, right? It's like four o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, there are some guys in there. Uh, not really anybody doing any hard drinking yet. Uh, just they're kind of there to get kind of burgers and nachos and stuff like that. Okay. So I sit down at the bar. Okay. Um, Esther, somebody, uh, a new customer, has sat down at your bar. Uh, you don't, you don't recognize her. She hasn't been here before. Name's Esther. Hi, hi. I'm I'm Faye Kava. What can I get you? Oh, you're friendly. Um, <laughs> can I get um? I guess. Do you have, do you have like, fish and chips at all? Let me see what we can get from the back. Okay. Thank. Thank you. James, I need fish and chips. James, James's face appears in the uh, kind of like the cubby window in between the kitchen and the bar, and he says, "What? Just take the fish off the fish sandwich. Uh -huh. Give me some French fries on the side, and put some malt vinegar in there." Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he disappears, and you hear him. Man, she just makes up items sometimes. I don't even know why we're serving this stuff. <laughs> okay. 
that'll be out in a minute. Can I get you a drink? Um, uh, I'll, I'll let you decide. You don't come to bars much, do you? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a third grade teacher. And you came here because you had a rough day? You know, something like that. Third grade's gotten a lot rougher than when I was there. So, have you ever seen a... I'm turned around mixing the drink at this point. But okay. Have you ever seen a man who I don't know what he looks like, actually? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've uh, seen okay. a man before. Thank you. I've, I've seen a man of nondescript appearance <laughs> with an undetermined name. He frequents this place. <laughs> have you ever seen... a? A big man, kind of burly, with dark hair and obviously works out too much and obviously drinks too much. So he's got the beer gut and five o'clock shadow. I don't, I don't know. He looks like any other white male. Well, uh, I hate to break it to you. Um, I work at a bar, and you just described about half my clientele. Great, um, great, so That's fantastic. Um, um, oh, you know what? He has, he has a tattoo on his forearm. It's, it's a knife. And a snake. A knife and a snake. Yeah, I've, I've uh, seen that one. Does he come here often? Pretty regularly. Daily, nightly. Great. Well, I will be hanging out here till he shows up, so. I, uh, I'm sorry, are you meeting him or like? I just have some business to take care of with him. Is he expecting you? Is anybody expecting anyone? I'm just saying, he doesn't seem like the type that wants to meet people he's not expecting to meet. Yeah, well, I didn't say he was going to be happy about seeing me. Look, I don't put up with bar fights, and you're a third grade teacher, so I don't think there's much you could do. I've got it under control. Thanks, though. Here's your drink. Thanks. She takes a sip and, like barely can get it down because she like doesn't drink often and so like it hits the back of her throat and it like burns and she's like oh gosh <laughs> and she like sips the rest of it down it's like it's it's fantastic thanks you are really talented james you got that fish and chips yet uh yeah i guess and he hands out just <laughs> a couple of fish sticks with a bag of chips on the side <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, fish and chips our new specialty James, this is not what I said. We'll talk about it later. Here's your fish and chips. Oh, thanks. Dear Lord, why did I come to America? Because <laughs> there uh, are no cats in America. <laughs> Faye, Faye and Esther are having a lovely time inside Morty's. Some time passes, and uh, Rin, you have uh, closed down the shop. Pablo went home. Uh, you got dressed for tonight's activities. Uh, what what do you usually wear for your nightly workouts, I guess? Usually I'm just in black pants. I've got a dark hoodie on, the hood's up. Um, I've actually like pulled the strings a little bit and so that like no one can really see me. Um, and like with me, I've got like a, a small backpack that just has my laptop and some different technological devices so I can hack into people's phones and see what they're doing. Um, and then I've also got this, um, I've made this technology where it's basically an incapacitated gun. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like a small shotgun, really. But So I've, I've got that on my side, and I've painted it black so it looks just like my pants so no one can see it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've also like created some glasses that kind of like look weird and techy. They're... Uh, blue like a dark navy blue uh, mixed in with black and so they look a little odd and I kind of tinker with them to make sure that I can zoom correctly and um, identify the drug deal going on from 100 feet away or so okay um, and so you have you have come to the place where this uh, this meeting is supposed to take place uh, and you see the um, you see the dealer that you've been looking for uh, he's kind of standing over in the alleyway, uh, and a younger guy kind of walks up. They exchange, give money, um, and once he has exchanged and done all that, he uh, gets in his car, or he goes to get in his car to drive away. 
Um, so I guess you could decide, do you want to go to him now, or do you want to uh, follow him back to wherever he, like his base of operations is, basically? Um, I'm actually just going to keep watching at a distance, and I've got just a little, um, it's an electronic motorbike that doesn't make any noise. Okay. Um, that I made it myself, and it's powered by like vegetable oil, so like no one can hear oh, it. Very friendly. Yeah, yeah. super friendly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so you're gonna follow this guy? Yeah. Okay. So you follow him, um, and let's go back to Morty's. Uh, Faye, you have seen uh, the man that you have come here to find, uh, Robert. We'll name him because I don't think y'all came up with the name. Uh, he's not like the name Robert. <laughs> So many white names. No, I. <laughs> Robert is my father's name. Okay. okay. <laughs> Not my actual father in the game. But Bob. <laughs> yeah. Bobby, Bobby. Um, fine. Richard walks in. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> he has a mustache. <laughs> Richard walks in <coughs> and um, he uh, he nods to Esther. Esther, of course, this is a a, a long time patron of yours. Uh, he's pretty cordial uh, always tips well uh, he goes to his usual sheet his usual seat and um, he kind of gives you the nod to give him the usual uh, Esther I go over and fill up his um, pint <laughs> we gotta <laughs> research some <laughs> bar like <that. laughs> Big drinkers. Is that can I give you like a crash course <laughs> after? Um, uh, and I take it over to him. How's it going today, Richard? Uh, you know, just a, another day down at the docks. Uh, just give me a stiff one, keep them coming, uh, and the burger. And I want, I want that fish sandwich with the fish sticks in the middle. That stuff's nasty. Just give me a burger. <laughs> Got it. James, I need one burger. Okay, I know how to make those. He starts grilling a burger. And lose the attitude. Faye, what do you do? Um, so I am staying where I am for now. Uh, I've kind of turned. So I'm sitting at the bar and he's like further down. So I've kind of turned so he doesn't see me because I don't want him to recognize me yet. I'm really hoping that he gets like, uh, <laughs> like a solid like pint in before I go okay. approach him. So you're going to wait a couple um, minutes. No, not a couple pints. Because I need him sober. I just need him to not, like, want to attack me. Um, and so I, like, Esther walks in front of me. And I'm like, hey, Esther. Yes? That That's the guy. Mm-hmm. Does he look mad? No more than usual. Great. Can you just, like keep refilling like i'll pay if i need to but just just like keep refilling his drink yeah that's what i do oh good good you know newbie in a bar <laughs> yeah i know okay great great oh is she gonna be a regular <laughs> <laughs> three okay. drinks one or two fights okay <laughs> so i <laughs> walk over and stand pull up right pull up Ma! <laughs> Just a ring jump. Cheers. Ma! <laughs> okay. Try again. Okay, so Faye gets up and she walks over to him and she like pulls up the bar stool right next to him. Hi, Richard. How you doing? Oh, Christ. Um, hello, Miss uh, Carver. Mm, great. Do you remember my name? Oh, it's such a pleasure to see you here. You go to bars? Yes, I do, actually. Me and Esther are besties. Are y'all good friends, too? He looks at Esther. What kind of face does Esther give him? She's got this blank stare on her face, and then she's like, besties. With a big old grin. Oh, yeah. Esther, dear. Oh, Faye. <laughs> she punches her in the arm a little harder than necessary oh it's such great friendship so um you know i was talking to johnny today and i noticed you know he has another black eye and i was just really curious how in the world he got two black eyes in one week yeah we're uh, we're trying out t-ball uh, 
No, I'm very coordinated. Oh, yes, yeah, T-ball. I forgot that, you know, when you're swinging, you just hit yourself in the eye all the time. Yeah, you, uh, you gotta be real careful. Hmm. Yeah, and, you know, what else would he have to be real careful about? I don't know, maybe pissing off his dad? Can I help you with something, Miss Carver? I don't know, Richard. All I know is that Johnny keeps coming to school, all banged up. You're drunk. And I'm worried about the safety of a child. So why don't you tell me what's going on at home? I'm standing close enough to hear the conversation, but not to, like, look like I'm obviously, like, intently listening, and I'm just kind of like, what is she starting? But I'm also getting kind of prepared to step in if I need to because it is my bar and I can't have her screwing stuff up. Okay. I don't know what you're implying, Miss Carver, but you have about 15 other kids in your classroom. So why don't you worry about those 15 kids and I'll worry about my kid and I will raise him how I want to. Well, unfortunately, I get to worry about all the kids. And fortunately... We, as a government, get to decide a little bit about how you raise your kid. And so if something is going on, I get to have a say. Richard pulls himself up to his full height, and he pulls back his arms, and you can hear his bones popping, and he he looks down at you menacingly, and he says, Mrs. Carver, you need to get back to school before you get hurt. She stands up as well and straightens up. I'm not afraid of you, Richard. You should be. Let's cut. Ren, you have followed this man back uh, to a downtown warehouse. Uh, he kind of pulls his part, or pulls his car into an alleyway, gets out, it goes inside. Uh, and on the second, you know, I'll say the first floor. The first floor of this warehouse, you see a very dim light come through one of the grimy windows. So I like look around. I'm like looking at my. Um, Cybernetic lenses also like check for heat signatures. You see, you see people in, uh, or I guess fuzzy images in different yeah. houses and stuff. Yeah. But nobody else is in the warehouse. Yeah, just people milling about in their own houses. Yeah. So I like find just an alley and I like set my bike and I've got a cover in my backpack that I throw over that just reflects it so no one even sees that it's there. Okay. Um, so I look around again. I don't see anybody. So I like dash over uh, to the warehouse, um, and then. I can, so I like peek in one of the just dirty windows, like peek in, look around, like rub it, try to get the dirt out of the way. There is only one guy in there, and just he's moving around. Uh, I guess you you can't really tell what he's doing, but there is the guy that you're looking for is in there by himself. So, I think at this point I'm going to. Um, go to, not the front door that he entered in, but I noticed that there's like this random back doorway in the back of the warehouse um, that's much darker and no one can see me entering, so I decided to go through there and kind of like slowly turn the handle and pop it open. Roll a sneaking around. So what power tags could you add to that? I am going to use my cybernetic lenses just to keep checking, make sure the guy's not moving. Okay. Go ahead and um, roll a, a sneak around with a plus one. Nine. Nine? Okay. I pop open the door, creak it open just a little bit, and you start uh, you start sneaking in. Uh, but as you do, uh, you're so focused on him that you kind of miss just this pile of boxes, and your shoulder hits it, and it all kind of comes crashing down. Um, he turns around. He doesn't see you, uh, but... He, uh, he kind of pulls out a gun from his jacket. He says, yo, uh, who's there? Silence. I, like, slowly grab my gun and start aiming it at him. Okay. Um, are you going to take a shot at him or what? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to align the sights, make sure that it's only on him. There's no one else around and shoot him. Okay. Um, and as you, as you get ready to pull the trigger. Hey! Hey, Pedro! You can't really see anything because that side of the warehouse is dark. Yo, man, what you want? Piece of crap. Hey, I know that you know some information. And Jeremiah 
Would really love it if you cooperated. Man, I don't know no Jeremiah. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. And then I kind of like start walking towards him. Do I see anyone on my way? <laughs> yeah, you totally don't. Uh, I just like bump into him and just walk straight past him. <laughs> yeah, you think him. it's just some boxes. Uh, Ren, this, this very raucous uh, man, just like a cowboy, just plods right by you towards the guy that you're here to get. Dude, what are you doing? I'm trying to catch this Pedro guy. Can Cost I help him? Got <laughs> my gun aimed at you. Get that out of my face. What do you think you're doing? I was here first. Good. This is not yours. Pedro's mine. You can have him later. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> and I just turn around and, just... and you look and Pedro is gone. And you see the front door just kitty, kitty, kitty. I run through this one. Swinging open. Uh, across the street well, you should be. And right at that moment, the doors to your pub just swing open, and this dude in a hoodie and a gun just out, just bursts through the door, and uh, everybody just kind of looks at him, and he, he looks at everybody, and he says, uh, Yo, everybody on the ground, man! Everybody on the ground! Dear I, Lord, does I, no I, one see that I am trying to bring about justice here? <laughs> I grab the gun that I've ha like I have in my side, and uh, I like hopping over the bar. What's the problem here? Yo, man, I told everybody to get down. I don't want to hurt anybody, but I will hurt somebody if I need to. Why don't you just tell me what the problem is? Man, I got no time for no problems. He pulls the what's it called the hammer back, and he kind of levels it at Esther. At this moment. Because he's still by the door, right? Mm -hmm. So at this moment, um, you notice a very small vine that comes in and just trips him. Roll a hit with all you've got. Okay. Um, mind control over nature, entangling vines. Okay, so plus two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, nine. Okay. Yeah, you, uh, you snag his foot, you trip him. Uh, and he falls to the ground. And, uh, As he falls forward, I grab his gun. Okay, go ahead and roll a... Uh, <coughs> and take the risk. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my react before it happens. Mm -hmm. And... I guess that's it. Okay. <laughs> I got a 12. Yeah, so you <laughs> snatch the gun right out of his hand as he falls down. He kind of scrambles around, like, looking for who tripped him, and he obviously sees no one. Uh, and right at that moment, uh, two guys, one with a very futuristic-looking shotgun, and the other with just bare arms, full of tattoos, kick in the door. You've got to be kidding me. I run up and I punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> End of episode. Now allow me to thank everybody for listening to this first episode of misconceptions i'm still really excited i hope you are too i've never done something like this and uh it, it's just exciting it's exciting to think of the possibilities i think we have a great cast of characters uh, i look forward to them uncovering more of the mystery and more of the story that is going to be happening in the city and i hope you are excited for it too now before i go any further uh, i just want to apologize for the audio quality of this episode it, it wasn't good. I think audio quality is probably the most important part of a podcast. You can have the best and most creative content, but if your audio quality isn't good, then you're not going to make it very far in the podcast world. This is my first time doing something like this. I was nervous. I had the first episode jitters. I was just so excited to get ready and do everything. I focused so much on getting everybody else's mics just perfect that I forgot to adjust the volume on my mic and so I sounded like I was 16 feet away from the mic when I was not that many feet away from the mic. I promise to fix that in the future. I'm definitely going to turn up the volume to my mic. Everybody else sounded great but I sounded like a, the who on the speck of Horton's uh, clover. You know it's like Dr. Seuss and whatever. As for when you can expect the next episode, I plan on posting new episodes every Monday. I would say to set your clocks to it, but I'm not going to make that promise because, you know, sometimes life happens. Uh, something could come at work, something could come up during my life, but I plan on posting a new episode every Monday, and you can look forward to that. 
We are a new show. Uh, I hope to be on iTunes within mm, probably 10 days to two weeks after this episode goes out. But until then, we rely very much on you sharing us. I hope that you liked us, and I hope that you'll share us with people that you think would like us too. Share us with role-playing groups you know. Share us with people that play City of Mist. Just just get our name out there, because we're, we're a new show. We don't have any promotional campaigns or anything like that. Really, the only way that we can get our name out is through word of mouth, and our listeners are going to help us a lot with that. So if you liked us, share us. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter to get updates about what we're doing and, you know, just see goofy stuff because we're a goofy group of kids. If you like City of Mist, and I hope you do, you can check out sonofoak.com. You can download the free starter set. Try it for yourself. It's a great system, like I said. Just go check it out for yourself. The music you heard at the beginning of this episode and we'll hear here in a little bit was composed by Aaron Wharton. If you like his music, check out more of it at AaronWharton.net. And that is all for today. And remember, a verb is an action word. It's something you do. Thank you.